airport hotel. So, if we determine a downtown hotel is typically when you have to pay for parking, how do you know you're an airport hotel? You can see an airport shuttle. You're, you're on fire today. You should probably be teaching the class. No, you're absolutely right. But let me add to that. It's got to be a free shuttle that runs 24 hours a day. So if, go ahead. The only reason I know that is because my dad has one. My dad has, one. has an airport hotel? Yeah, right. Is it a free shuttle? Yeah. 24 hours? Sure. It's an airport hotel. What, what kind of hotel is it? Is it four points on uh, near Raleigh? Near okay, perfect. And it, you, but you agree, right? You can't call yourself an airport hotel if you don't have a free shuttle. Now, some hotels say, yeah, we have a shuttle, but they'll charge you. And they'll say it's only between these hours. But if you're near if you're near airport, you have to have <coughs> an airport shuttle free 24 hours. That, to me, is kind of the litmus test that makes you an airport hotel, okay? <coughs> Let me tell you something about airport hotels. And your dad, did you work there as well? I did. Okay. So you, you can relate to this. You get up in the morning, and this is the first thing you to do you do to uh, determine if you're going to have a good day or not. Doesn't have anything to do with bodily functions or girlfriends or boyfriends or anything like that. Okay. What do you do to know if you're going to have a good day or not? No, no. You get up in the morning and you're going to go to work at the airport hotel. <coughs> How do you know if you're going to have a good day or not? Or if it's going to go crazy on you? Weather? Well, yes. What about the weather? Check it. Turn on the TV and check the weather channel. Why? Delays. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're right in the middle of one right now. Anybody going to try to fly up to New York or Boston this weekend? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm glad because you're probably not going to make it. Because there's a bunch of cancellations. And let me just say this. <coughs> You turn on the weather channel and everything is sunny across the United States, you go, whew, life's going to be good today. Because things at an airport hotel are just almost like a downtown hotel. You turn on the TV and it says, oh, flight delays everywhere. Your day is going to go crazy. Now, why, even if, let's say, if you're in Columbia, South Carolina, <coughs> What does it matter if New York and Boston are all snowed in? It's not snowing in Columbia, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Everybody's going to be rerouted this way and try to come this way. Flights are going to be canceled coming in, and flights are going to be canceled <coughs> going out to these locations. And if you know anything about air travel, they usually don't go A, point A to point B. They go point A to point B to point C to point D. And so if their first leg is canceled, it means that either their second, third, and fourth leg are canceled or they're delayed. It's just mass chaos. It really is. And I knew, working at an airport hotel, if the weather was bad in a you know, portion of the country, especially the northeast, you can get by if it's <coughs> Minneapolis or you know, out in the Midwest, but everything <coughs> seems to come through the northeast there. And you got people that are supposed to check out, that are flying out, <laughs> they can't get out. They have to extend their stays. You have people that are supposed to come in. They can't get in, and they're canceling their reservations. It's just mass chaos, okay? And so, um, but that's the fun of an airport hotel is that things will go great for a long time, and then you'll get some bad weather, and it's, okay, we're, fly we're, we're flying without, uh, by the seat of our pants here, okay? I mean, is that true? Did you, did you ever have that? Yeah. Well, I went through the summer. But I'm sure. oh, oh, oh. Well, you get some bad weather storms, but yeah, the winter really plays havoc on you. All right. So, airport hotels, um, pretty much like business hotels. All right. Um, now, freeway hotels and motels. What age of tourism was the car? <coughs> Got better than that from the exam. <coughs> Third, excellent, thank you. <coughs> Along comes the car, and again, it changes the way that we travel. And because we change the way we travel, we have to have a new lodging product. <coughs> And that is the rise of what we call the roadside hotel 
or as some people call it, the motel. <coughs> Who can tell me what the difference is between a hotel and a motel? Outside? Is it a motel outside? Outside? Uh, it's like open-ended and there's no... Okay, all right. It's uh, not a lobby. You're talking about outside access. Yeah, like, you know how it's like open? Yeah. It's, like open yeah. it's how, open. That's okay. I don't disagree with you. What else? Yes, sir. It's right off the interstate. Right off the interstate. I don't disagree with you. Yes, sir. Does that do with like the reservation system? Um. I don't know. Explain a little bit like, further. Like the motels, like mo most motels probably don't take reservations. They're kind of like walk-ins usually. Okay. Yeah, there's actually some independent hotels, or excuse me, hotels out there, mom and pops, that it's just okay, you, you pull in. Okay. Don't disagree with you. What else? So that like hotel, or motels are <coughs> toward like a one night stand, they offer like less amenities and stuff like that than a hotel? Less amenities at a hotel. I don't disagree with you. <coughs> Anything else? Yes, sir. Cheaper? Cheaper? I don't disagree with you. Now, by now, you've kind of figured out, you know, usually I say I agree with you, but I'm saying I don't disagree with you. And when it comes to hotels and motels, let me just say, you know, I'm probably one of the leading experts in the world on hotels. And even I, <coughs> as much of an expert as I am, can't give you a hard, fast definition of what the difference between a hotel and a motel is. All the things that you listed, <coughs> yes, typically are correct, but it's not <coughs> consistent. In other words, I can find an exception to every rule that you've given me. For example, this said cheaper. Right, cheaper. There are some motels that are more expensive than hotels out there. And generally, motels are cheaper. Who said the one night, right? Yeah, generally, motels are one night, but I know people who stay in motels for like a month at a time <clears throat> because they are cheaper, okay? Um, less amenities, yes. Typically, hotels have more amenities, but not always. And, it, and I mean, the list goes on. And so this is what I say. How do you tell if it's a hotel or motel? Well, there's an old story <coughs> about a judge who, in the Bible, bed, uh, they passed a ruling that said you can't have pornography. Pornography is illegal. And so, of course, these uh, you know liberal lawyers come out and they say, well, you know, what's pornography? Because I can show you a famous painting of a nude woman. Is that pornography? Well, no. So what's the difference? And the judge said, well, son, I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. And he's saying the same thing I am, not about <coughs> pornography, but about hotels. I can't define it. I can't come up with a hard, fast definition that applies to everything, but I know one when I see one. And here's how I do it. All the things that you said that a motel are, I weigh against it, yes, no, yes, no, yes, yes. And if there are more yeses than no, then in my book it's a hotel. Or excuse me, it's a motel. Generally motels have what are, and this is where I was going with you, generally have what's called an outside access, meaning the door goes right to the parking lot. Right? Or a, motel, or a hotel, you typically have to go inside one door which takes you to a corridor where you have to get into another door. But um, what they found <laughs> was that robbers like motels a lot because all they have to do is sit in their car next to your car and when you are next to your, your door and when you go to, to, to open your door they just follow you, hit you over the head and drag you inside the motel room. And so now, if you want to construct a motel, you can have just the door to the parking lot, but your insurance rates are incredibly high. To the point, it's cheaper for you to build um, inside corridors. You know what I'm talking about, inside corridors, right? The hallways? <laughs> yeah, hallways. There's got to be hallways that have outside access doors that you have to key to get in so that robbers just can't be walking up and down the hallways. Um, and so that's what we see even today when a new 
hotel, our motel is built, it has corridors. It has one door you have to get in to get in the door. <coughs> now, where did the name motel come from? Anybody know? <coughs> it actually, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to guess Motor Hotel. Ooh, you, yes, you, you're right. But it started off as actually, go ahead. I was going to say mobile, but. Nope, it's <laughs> Motor Court. Court. Hotel. And they just shortened it to Motel. Why do they call them Motor Court Hotel? <coughs> well, if you were to go back into the 50s and see how they were designed, it makes total sense. And the neat thing about living in South Carolina <coughs> is there's so, some of these that are still around. <coughs> okay? So here's the road. Again, I'm a terrible artist, I know it. And here is our Motor Court Hotel. Okay. Here are our rooms. All right. <laughs> so we're driving along, and it's getting late, we're getting tired, and we see a motor court off to the side of the road. So we take our car, right, and we pull in, and this is the office. We go into the office, and we check in, and they say, okay, you're in room five. And so we pull our car up to room <coughs> five. And we check in. <coughs> or we checked in here, and now we get into our room. 